Today's lesson was on multiplying fractions by whole numbers. <clears throat> we talked a little bit about the commutative property. The commutative property states that in order um, that the order in which numbers are added or multiplied does not matter. However, we'll see that it does not work with multi with uh, division or subtraction. And that's going to help us today when we're multiplying fractions. So the modeling behind it, so you can see visual representation. If you ever see a problem like 2 times 2 fifths, a whole number of times a fraction, think of the 2 standing for 2 columns. Think of your fraction talking about how much of each column is shaded. To find 2 times 2 fifths, you can take a look at your 2 columns. If I have 2 fifths shaded in of both, then that means I have 4 fifths total. So we know our answer is going to look like 4 fifths. Now I'm going to show you the actual math behind the modeling. So the way you would do this is take your 2, just rewrite the problem, 2 times 2 fifths. Underneath your whole number, please place a number 1. We know that all fractions, or all whole numbers rather, can be expressed as a fraction over 1. <clears throat> now you multiply across. 2 times 2 equals 4. 1 times 5 equals 5. Since we can't reduce any further, our answer is simply 4 fifths. Here's another example. This time we have the whole number on the right. Nothing changes. You rewrite it the same way you see it. And under your whole number, you can stick a 4 underneath. Again, we're going to multiply right across. 3 times 4 is 12. 5 times 1 is 5. And you cannot leave your answer like this. This is known as an improper fraction. Not proper. So what we have to do is Tebow. And Tebow stands for top in, bottom out. In other words, we're going to divide out uh, the 5 and just make sure that it's a mixed number. Top in, bottom out. 5 can't go into 1, but it can go into 12 twice with a remainder of 2. So that's why our answer is 2 and 2 fifths. All right, in summary, rewrite the problem, put a 1 under the whole number, multiply across, and then simplify. 1 fourth times 5 is the same as 1 fourth times 5 over 1. 1 times 5 is 5, 4 times 1 is 4, and at this point we can simplify by doing Tebow. Top in, bottom out. 4 goes into 5 once. And 5 minus 4 is 1. So it looks like our answer is 1 and 1 quarter. Here's a word problem. A sloth spends 4 fifths of its life asleep. If a sloth lives to be 28 years old, how many years does it spend asleep? So if, it's, if you ever see the word of like that in a problem, basically what it's telling you is 4, th four fifths of its life Worse, we're spent being asleep. This keyword reveals that we're going to multiply by the number of years he was alive. And this way we can figure out how many years he's been asleep. The sloth has been alive for 28 years old, so let's go ahead and set up a multiplication problem. We're going to put 1 under our 28, and now we can multiply across. 28 times 4. I'll go on my scrap so I can solve it correctly. Looks like I get 112, and 5 times 1 is 5. Now we're going to go ahead and Tiba so we can get a simple answer. Bring down the 2. 5 goes into 12 2 times, with a remainder of 2. So it looks like my answer here is 22 and 2 fed. You want to make sure you label your units, and since we're talking about how long the sloth sleeps, we're going to say years.